thing now, stop learning. Like I always, I always keep learning. I mean, myself, I'm, I'm still learning, you know? Like, uh -huh. My dad's been doing his whole life and he tells me like, he's still learning, you know? Like, It's your man Sunday's Best and I want to first thank you for supporting the movement and the channel and I want to let you know you can go to sundaysbest.com right now and order yourself some merch. Every day is Sunday. What's up y'all man? It's Sunday's Best here and I'm here with my man Mario from Eminem Auto Upholstery and uh, if you've been following my channel, you've been following the build on my 78 then you know how they get down, man. The interior work is phenomenal. Um, you know, they do a, a host of things here at the shop. So I figured it would be fitting for me to be able to take some time and sit down with them and give y'all a little deeper look on how they got started, the story and all that good stuff, man. So what's happening with you, Mario? Chilling, chilling, bro. <laughs> hey, man, so first and foremost, Thank you for the work you did on the lack, man. It's beautiful. And I haven't even hit the streets yet. I already got people complimenting me on it and stuff online. So big ups to you and, and uh, pops for that. Uh, so upholstery, how'd you get started? Well, um, my dad's been doing it his whole life. Uh -huh. uh, my uncle, he's on the bottom. Uh -huh. And well, basically he started since he was uh, 15. Wow. He's uh, 47 now, so he's been <laughs> his whole life. and. Uh, Taught me. Dope. Like, like a family thing, you know? There we go. Okay, so you were kind of like groomed right into it. I, I, grew, I grew into it. And... Nice, nice. So, when did you first kind of know, hey, this is what I'm going to do too? Like, did you did you kind of start off wanting to do anything else or was it just... Well, I kind of started just like with a regular job, you know, like a... Like I, I used to work at a machine shop, uh -huh. and then when my dad used to work at a shop like for somebody else, and uh, like I don't know, one day he just told me he's gonna start like working for himself. Nice. So he quit. His, he quit that job he had and he started working for himself at the house. Wow. And then, um, well, he started going uh, like clientele, and then, um, well, he couldn't keep up with the demand anymore, so he told me if I wanted to come up, come up him out. I mean, I always been around it. Like he would take me to the shop, and I would just help him, you know, just look right there at the shop, and then we'll. He told me that well he couldn't do it by himself anymore, so he told me he told me then well I quit my job and uh we started uh, right there at the house at the garage and then um last year we moved to a shop like down the street and then well we all grew that one and then well now we're here. <laughs> yeah. That's dope. So it's just been growth yeah. ever ever since. Was uh was it kind of <clears throat> was it kind of nerve wracking to like take that risk. I know a lot of people like when it comes to entrepreneurship and stuff like that, they get nervous with stuff like that. Did you did you feel any of that pressure? Yeah, it was it was kind of scary because you know like it wasn't a like a secure check weekly, you know, which is like kind of like a like whatever comes in. Yeah. But like thankfully it's, it's been going really good. Yeah, I I've been seeing y'all y'all turning out a lot of cars um yeah. e even before I I dealt with you and then even after, you know, it's I've been seeing you guys moving, man. So congrats on that. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you guys with the growth. Do you have plans on, like, trying to take this to an even bigger level, or do you have plans on like branching off and doing something else, or how, how do you see your future as it pertains to that? Well, I mean, the plans to make, make it, make it big, you know, um, mm -hmm. get more, get a bigger spot, get more workers, yeah. get more work done. Dope. Yeah. Dope. Have you ever had any like cars where they, they come in and you get nervous like to touch it? Like, or are you scared to uh, like <clears throat> kind of mess with it? Well, I mean, we, we've got a lot of nice cars. Like, uh -huh. I don't know. <laughs> Knowing what you know now, if you could go back and teach your younger self something or tell your younger self something regarding your path, what would it be? Um, I would have probably started like doing this thing younger, you know? <laughs> it started sooner? Yeah, it started sooner. <laughs> yeah. What's it like? What's it like being able to work like with your dad, man? Like it's dope, you know, gonna spend time with my pops all day, every day. That's tight. Work and chop it up. That's dope. Yeah. 
is he harder on you than uh than uh any other any other people that y'all like got working here? Nah, he kind of let me do my own thing, you know. But like when I mess up, like he was talking to Cam, he was wrong, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's, 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 he's cool though. That's dope. Yeah. That's cool. And then as far as actual like you know work in the cars, the upholstery, things like that. Do you have a particular specialty or is it just kind of like everybody knows a little bit of everything and then you just do whatever needs to get done at that moment? Well, like the like the nice cars, like the low riders. Uh -huh. so honestly, most, most of the cars are low riders. Uh, my dad and another guy that helps us, uh, they don't want to do the low riders because I mean, if you break something, you really can't find anything, you know? Right. And like I said, like, like I'm new to this, well, I know what I'm doing, but like, you know, like, they have like obviously him and my dad have way more experience, so uh -huh. like they're the ones that deal with the with the with the low riders and I do like the newer cars, okay, car lights, right? Stuff like that, yeah. I saw that. I saw a lot of people are getting that that starlight. Uh, how did you how did you learn how to do that? Did you teach yourself or did you just see it or like like how did that come about? Because it's pretty popular. Yeah. So so the story how I started doing it is a. Uh, my uncle, the one that showed my dad how to do upholstery, uh -huh. his son, or well, my cousin, he also has a shop in Arizona. Oh, nice. He has an upholstery shop, and uh, well, he did it, like, he, he did the starlight, and then, well, he, he, he showed my dad, and my dad told me, hey, like, this looks cool, we should do it. Yeah. And uh, we did it on my truck, and then, he, when we did it, I mean, we taught it, this is not, it's, it's not too difficult to do, you know? Yeah. It's just a lot of work. So we did it on my truck, and then when we posted it, and then like it just it just blew up, you know. <laughs> everybody, everybody wants to start like that. Yeah. Do you have uh, like any aspirations or plans to maybe start like teaching a course? Doing I it? have a lot of guys that ask me like, oh, like, do you offer the apprentice program or something like that? Like, yeah. do you teach them how to do a push and like yeah. starlights, but. Uh, it would be cool, you know, but right now, I just don't have time. I'm just really busy. Right, right. I, I mean, I taught my girlfriend how to do the starlights, but only because I need help to do them, you know, because yeah. it's much work. <laughs> so she knows how to do them, too. Also, so, but other than that, I just haven't really taught anybody. That's dope. So so your girl, you you kind of looped her in, too, like, yeah. to the business and stuff like that, huh? Yeah, I mean, thanks to her, we're able to knock out a lot because, I mean... That's dope. Well, I'm the only one with the Starlights, and uh -huh. well, I mean, she helps me now, so we knock out like two or three a day. Dang, yeah. that's dope. That's real dope, man. Yeah. When it comes to uh, like taking on projects, have there been any projects where it's just it's just too much? It's too daunting. Like, is there any task that somebody brought you? They're like, hey, man, I want you to do this, and you just look at it and like, man, I I can't do that. It's it's too much. And if it's no, it's cool. It's no. You know what I'm yeah, saying? If you don't turn down. Obviously, there's been some hard times, but thankfully, like, like, like I said, I have my dad and the other guy that helps us. They're like, they're good. You know, like yeah. they know what they're doing. <laughs> so, like, if I can't do it, like, don't knock it out. Yeah. So, uh, a little earlier, you mentioned like with the lowriders and stuff like that. You know, these are older cars. You know, some of them from the '60s, some of them from the '70s. You know, maybe even some from the 50s. Mm -hmm. um, and you mentioned if you break something, like it's, you know, those parts are hard to come by, you know. Have you ever had an experience where it was like, oh man, I accidentally <laughs> broke this or, oh, I gotta, I gotta figure this out. Have you ever had an experience like that? Like when you were first starting out or something like that? <laughs> You're probably like, I don't wanna say it on camera even I if mean, I did. I <laughs> I don't really mind, you know, because if, if I have, we fixed it, but yeah, not yeah, that I could, not, not, not that I can think of, honestly. Uh, well, that's good, that's yeah, a good thing, then, man. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's happened before, I mean, not uh -huh. to me, it's just one of the other guys, but yeah, we fixed it, if anything. Uh, I know with me, you you gave me like some some pretty good direction on certain things, or like what might work and what what might not work, and you know things like that. Have you always been like that to kind of know what would look good in the car, or do you just kind of let the clients come and just they just tell you whatever and you do exactly what they say and don't? I mean, <clears throat> don't come up with an idea, but and then I mean we've done so many cars, so we kind of know what looks good and what doesn't. Yeah. So we kind of just give them our opinion. Uh -huh. Normally they're like, okay, yeah, like that makes sense, you know, like that yeah. better, and they 
they go based off what we say. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's it's not our car, you know, it's the client's car. So right. whatever they say, that's what we do. So on a, on average, uh, for those that are watching that, you know, maybe want to consider uh, booking with you guys, these are things that I like to know when I call shops and things like that. So I figure we'll, you know, kind of do it right here. What's in, you know, average turnaround time for like, like a, I don't know if you would call it basic, but just a standard interior on, on a low rider. What's your average like turnaround time? So like for, let's <clears throat> say in Impala, it's like the most popular car in our phone. Like for the seats, the door panels, the, the carpet, and the, and the headliner, if it's not a rack top, like a week to two weeks. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we go based on appointments because we don't like the car just sitting there, you know? Like, right. we like the car, we, we like to get the car when we actually, when we, that's the time we start working on you know? Right, right. Yeah, because I know a lot of a lot of my buddies have cars sitting somewhere, like that's been there for months and some even years. Yeah, we, we've had clients come like, and tell us that their, their car's been sitting at the, at the paint shop for like a year or two years. Oh yeah. yeah that's, that's crazy. Hey, paint gel is real. Yeah, paint yeah. gel is real. And that's why I, I I went elsewhere. <laughs> I took my stuff out of state. You went to Las Vegas, right? Yeah, yeah. I took it to, to Vegas, took it to Foul Owl. Shout out to Foul Owl, man. Um, but but that's dope, man. So when it comes to when it comes to the newer cars, the newer vehicles or anything like that, right? So that's mainly like that's where you kind of jump yeah, in yeah. And, and knock those out, huh? I saw you were doing a lot of uh, well, you were doing a couple, I think. You're doing a lot of trucks and you were doing like some challengers yeah. and so you guys don't discriminate it's no cars that like people bring and you're like no we don't do work on those no, whatever whatever car we, we got you <laughs> that's dope man that's dope yeah. oh nice Stitching? Yeah. <laughs> That's dope. So, so do you, do you, uh, you know how to sew too? Yeah. For real? <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, that's our bread and butter of upholstery. So if, if people want to uh, book with you or find find you, find out about you, whatever the case may be, um, I mentioned you guys on you know on, on Sunday's Best or whatever, but let's just say if somebody is only just finding out about you from this video right here, how would they contact you? What's the best way? Uh, Instagram or a, or a phone call or text. Okay, perfect. And then holler at Mario, man, for all your upholstery needs. And uh, I'm going to get back to showing y'all a little bit of how they get down here in the shop.